So we've been reflecting. Two weeks ago, we talked about the fact that God doesn't treat everyone equally. Remember, God loves us equally, but treats us differently. And it should be very clear to your spirit and clear to your mind. God loves us equally, without a doubt. But God treats us differently. That is what we talked about two weeks ago. Today, it is so difficult for me to give a theme, like a theme, a topic on my message. It's so difficult. It's just so difficult. So I decided to just come up, whatever it is, let it, let it be. <laughs> Sincerely, so, so round, like I don't know what to do about it. But it is reflecting we're still reflecting on why God treats us differently and why the end of time will be different for different people. And the end will come. Whoever doubts that the end will come should find out whether his grandfather is still alive or great-grandfather is still alive. There is an end and there will be the end. There is an end to everything every season and everybody and there will be the end grand finale the grand finale existence in this mortal realm and so this season traditionally affords us opportunity to look at end how they end to do what the psychologists will call the pro the pre-mortem we know of post-mortem post-mortem <laughs> the medicals are very close with the to the Postmortem. Have you heard of pre-mortem? Okay, so you need to pay me a fee for me to explain pre-mortem. I, I I borrow something from a man. It's not a Christian writer, but I have been blessed so much by his writing. Stephen R. Covid, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, one of the greatest books I've read. Um, and he was a Christian. It's now late. It's is talking about principles that cannot be broken. It talks about the end from the beginning. Isn't that what God is? Who God is? How he sees things? He looks at things, the end of things from the beginning. So Stephen Arcovi gives us opportunity to reflect on the, at the, or on the end, right from the beginning. And talks about you sitting down here. Imagine your funeral. Just imagine your funeral. audience a congregation attending your funeral imagine what the priest will say and if you are married imagine what your wife in sincerity I don't mean the lies that we agree to tell when certain people have died a real family agreement but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about genuinely you as a husband attending your funeral by imagination and then listen to what your wife genuinely will say about you. Listen to what your sons, your daughters will say about you. Listen to what your neighbors, if you were a manager, if you were a leader, a political leader, if you were somebody, what people will genuinely say about you, not, not you know, in, in politics, I don't know if it is like that in all the states. I've come to know in Akwai, Mom said it's a culture. Paying a crowd so that when somebody appears, our man, our man, our man, and you look at the faces of people who say, our man, they don't mean it. They act dress they don't need it. that's not the one I'm talking about I'm sorry I'm talking about genuine you may try to zone off there are people who just feel I'm wasting their time if you zone off I zone into you you will do this exercise because you will die one day I don't care what you say 
Whatever you serve that tells you it doesn't matter, this voice will never leave you. You will hear every day it matters. So assuming you die and you attend your funeral and you were a boss and genuinely those who served under you, one after another will say things about you. Like this is a man who took bits and pieces from our salary, deducted everything and left nothing for us. And this is a man who had to do this. This is a man. And your wife comes. This is a man who caused me hypertension when I was 25. <laughs> or a man saying a woman, just because I married this woman at 35, I was older than my grandfather. The stress, the pressure. Just imagine that kind of thing. What kind of funeral will you attend? concerning yourself what will people genuinely say about you without pretense any kind of pretense that is what this kind of season this is what this season affords us as a gift because the end is a reminder that your life will end here so what is the testimony of this year about you that's what i came i just came to awaken your consciousness to the reality that this year has a testimony about him. This year says something because you have written your story. You have written your history. And this year is a chapter. So what is this year saying about you? In your work life. In your career life. In your ministry life. In your marital life. As a parent. As a father. As a mother. What is this life? What is this year testifying to about you? We have been talking about fruit. Let me just remind you, I will soon be done. Today's reflection is not preaching. Once you see me going into preaching, say, just raise your hand. Say, no, 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 not preaching, just reflecting. Remember, we have talked about fruits. 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 Today, we have a couple of scriptures about fruits. And today is a little bit difficult to deal with fruit. It's not a beautiful day to deal with fruit. But we'll try. Matthew chapter 21, verse 19. If you read from verse 18, I don't know. I think verse 18 may help us. Matthew chapter 21, and verse 18. Now in the morning, I to the city. he was hungry. He was hungry. The scripture is in big care. Bible knowledge is saying, who? You know, like, to who? <laughs> and all, we are. And when? <laughs> Who is this? Jesus Christ. So Jesus, the incarnate word, the one who eternally was, is, and will be God, and who came in the flesh. He was hungry. The word hungry applied to Jesus Christ is deep, and it goes beyond a biological, physiological fact. Of the body craving to be filled. Few occasions, hunger and thirst are used to describe Jesus. In John's Gospel, chapter 4, the scripture talks about Jesus at the well of the well that called Je the well of Jacob, Jacob's well in Samaria. And a woman, a Samaritan woman, came to fetch water. The disciples had gone, had gone to buy him food because he was hungry, he was weary. Of his journey, he was hungry. They, he, they went for food. But as the woman came, his hunger was satisfied. Told the woman, give me water, give me a drink. <laughs> you a Jew, I a Samaritan woman, and you asked me for water? And Jesus took advantage. If you knew the gift of God, of course you will. If you knew the gift of God, and he asked you for drink, you should, you, then you will have asked for Ask for something, I will have given you life-giving water. From that moment, he began his work as a prophet, as a redeemer, as a savior, and he was satisfied. By the time the, the disciples came back, they saw him talking to a woman, a Samaritan woman. Implications here, talking to a woman and a Samaritan You are too holy to have talked to a woman. This is a society that Islam is modeled upon. The ancient Semitic world, the ancient 
in the east. Till you know, Islam is built upon that. The east, like Taliban in is segregating, making sure that women and men cannot share the same means of. And they tried, they brought it to Nigeria. They call it um, Sharia. Yeah, okay. And in some very holy churches, they do that. So men don't sit with women. And they do that, they don't understand why. <laughs> Let's leave that one. Okay. So this man, you are too holy to have sat with a woman. Because the culture of that time saw woman, saw a woman as a personification of evil. And, and, and Paul said something in the scripture, it's a woman that fell. A woman that eats the fruit. Not man. And when Paul said that, we have to put that in context and not preach it. Why? Because Paul was a Pharisee. And as a Pharisee, he was the overseer of the execution and implementation of this understanding of life that men and women should not be together and holding against the woman and every woman, whatever happened with Eve in the garden. And of course, you know, in Christ, the scripture says there is neither male nor female, neither Jew nor Gentile. And... Um, Everyone is, 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 is in Christ and is, is, is one in Christ. Everyone is Christ. So coming to see Jesus, the disciples had this mental structure that gave no room for the Savior, this Holy Son of God, to have any form of close interaction with a woman. And this woman is not just a woman. This woman also is a Samaritan woman. And the commentary in John chapter 4 at that spot is that for Jews had no dealings with the Samaritans. But Jesus guys went on and on and on. And they began to wonder, could somebody else have brought him something else, something to eat? And they asked, Lord, come and eat. He said, no, I have food to eat. You know nothing about. So the scripture, it says he was hungry. Let's go back to that uh, first scripture. Now in the morning as he returned to the city, can you read the next with me? One go. He was hungry. So you understand here that this is a, hung, a kind of hunger that serves as an opportunity for something. He was hungry, be, he was hungry for something beyond Amala and Iwilu, beyond Ekpang Yotong. And he was hungry beyond what you and I know to be traditionally useful when people are hungry. When God hungers, he hungers for salvation. He hungers for results. When the Savior hungers, he hungers for something deeper. It's very, it's very important. Let's move. Having understood that, let's push forward. He was hungry. Now, you take the word, he was hungry, it will help us to explain everything that will happen next. He was hungry, and when we talk about hunger, it's intense longing for something. Longing that is not emotional. Because emotional longing can be distracted. When you long for something emotionally, you, you can psychologically get something else to distract you. When you are hungry, nothing distracts you. If you have a hungry child, distract that child. It works. So this, this is a deep-seated passion that will not be distracted. And seeing a fig tree, the fig tree the people of Israel, of course, agrarian people, everything was about the land. Everything was about agriculture. They talk about the cattle for the stall, provided them meat. They talked about olive and provided them with oil. Talked about vine, provided them for, with wine for celebration. Olive, oil for anointing and beautification and healing. Adornment. Then the cattle provided the meat for celebration and sustenance. The fig. The fig provided them with food. The fig provided the fruits of the fig. It was like, you know, something we eat rice or not rice. Something that is like, so fig was very important for the fruits that it brought. It was so 
supposed to bring energy, instant relief. So the fikir is very, very deep in symbolism. A fikir, not any other tree. Just because was not looking for celebration, he would have gone to the wine. He was not looking for decoration and healing. He was not saying he would have gone to the olive. He was not looking for kind of um, a feast. A feast of rich stuff. He would have gone to an animal, a cattle. A, a, a stuff that will work on force. He was looking for basic satisfaction. Basic, very basic energy. And he went to the fig. He came to it and found nothing on it but leaves. Now, when we talk about leaves, leaves on a tree, they give testimony about the condition of that tree. A tree in the desert will not have leaves. And if it has leaves, it will not be leaves that will attract attention. If, if you travel to northern part of Nigeria, the more you go towards you know, everything changes. And things get drier and drier. Leaves become more scanty and scanty. By the time you get to Kano and you are thinking about crossing the yard, you begin to see last, large, vast expanse without green, without leaves. You may see trees, but there are trees that just have branches. Some very ugly trees. They are not very beautiful at all. In Iribi, you know, it's an no leaves. But this particular tree had leaves. That means a testimony to the fact of nourishment. That provision had been given. That the tree was well fed. Come on. Come on. We are coming. Is somebody following me? Praise God. Praise God. I've said a couple of things. And each of them is intentional to draw, to paint the picture for you to know why Jesus will react the way he reacted. Because in these days of grace, grace mixture, people will say, oh, that scripture, that was Satan. How will Jesus, how will God curse a tree? You see, people, people preach from myopia. Spiritual myopia. <laughs> I think myop myopia is short-sightedness. You cannot see beyond the later into the depth of revelation. And they have a lot of following because a lot of people, when it comes to spirituality, a lot of people are myopic. That's general. And so myopia appeals to the myopic. I'm sorry. Just trying to explain something. But if you go deeper, you will. I'm just trying to let you see the, the, the graphic picture that attracts the response of Jesus. He found nothing on it but leaves. So the question is that how will you have nourishment? How will you have everything that should make you fruitful? And you have no fruits except just the testimony. I have been blessed. That's the kind of targeting that political office holders in Kenya. You see, when somebody is appointed something or had um, a well election, whatever it is, has brought somebody to that. He said, We go for Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. This Thanksgiving means you are giving testimony. I'm green. Green for what? What hope do we have? You can make a difference. Tell us your story. Tell us your history. By the way, we don't have history. Those who lead us at different level, no history about them. History of contribution and value. The only history is that is our turn. It's our geopolitical constitution, uh, constituency. What? That is our history. History of that. What, what is it in your past that can make us celebrate you? What is it in your past that can make us honor you. I don't want to go to national because I will have said something. Not a fan of Tinubu. I actually prayed against him. Then God let us know he will, what he will be. And I told you that we, that is how it is. But I began to reflect. I don't know so many questions about him. I don't know too many things. He has a lot of questions to answer. And that's not the issue here. The issue is that. A man, however he came into Lagos State, came into Lagos State. After he left the state till now, he 
every every other governor is under compulsion to push Lagos forward. He has history. Everything being equal in Nigeria, he has the pedigree to do something. Any other person that have been there before him, sincerely, uh, we don't know of any, any serious history like that. So he has a great opportunity. And let's pray for him. Because his success is the success of Nigeria. Because I grew up as a young man in Lagos. And by the time the man came first, Shola is a man who succeeded him that EFCC has not found anything against. And he's still trying to be relevant. And so it's, he has history. Let's pray for him. Because you can succeed in a corner. To succeed in Nigeria is a very complex thing. For example, they just send people to Dubai. They send an entire country. Entire country, 400 and something lazy people. To go and feel, to go and feel Dubai. And something. Okay, sorry, I didn't know. An entire nation, lazy people went and filled and did shopping on the bills of Nigeria. So we pray for him, oh, oh God, do well. I'm sorry. You know me, I will not talk without. Those of you who are new in my church, at Bobo Wo. So this is how I am. Oh, it's not because you are here. I don't even know who you are, apart from my, my people and all the friends that have come. I love you, by the way, in advance. Leaves. So when we have office, when we are appointed, when we uh, say I'm a professor and we go and do Thanksgiving, professorship means leave. You have leave. You have been dead. Many people started with you, died, and didn't get to that point. Many people failed. You were not the most intelligent. You favor has helped you. Health has helped you. Longevity has helped you. You have arrived at leave. There is something else. Fruits. opportunities that you have in life is a testimony that you carry leaves but of course opportunities are not equal to prosperity prosperity is the positive result of opportunities leaves so let's talk about the leaves that you and i have had during the year you are sitting down here because you have had the leaves of health if you have any kind of ailment not crippling otherwise you will not sit here there are so many people who love to be in church today just means of transportation being able to pay fare today for them is like traveling traveling to india just to come to church so you have the leaves of the provision enough for you to move yourself these days of fear being more costly than almost the breath that we have to breathe you drove your car down here some of you, you are, you are not the one directly fueling your car. It's just that your car is fueled, leaves. Now, God is unyielding in setting fruit wherever there are leaves. God is unyielding. Is, God is intense. God is intentional. God is passionate. Now, when the word says he was hungry, now, this is intensity. Hunger is uh, another word for intensity. God has intense passion, intense desire. The one who has crowned you with health, the one who has given you intelligence and ability to study and to graduate and uh, to have moved from one place to another. The one who you have cheated, you have done all sorts of wrong things uh, and people's prayers have not killed you. You are still carrying leaves. Your mates in the crime you have committed, they are, they are in prison and if you are not there. You are, you are walking free. This and the point is this God is passionately intentionally and intensely seeking for fruits because wherever there are leaves there should be fruit leaves here meaning provision all that is required for you to show up and to play the game of life in ministry I've been blessed with, with leaves the way I talk when people come to my churches when I'm up here at the altar, I'm fighting till I'm going. Because we have to fight something. The only battle of life is battle against evil. Scripture says we are not wrestling against flesh and blood. So this is not about this man or that woman or this person or that person. We are wrestling against evil that uses a man. Wrestling against wickedness. 
that makes a man sit on the right of others. Battling against laws that makes a man rob a husband of the wife's, the wife's peace. And all other things. And all other things. God is the God of fruits. So did we learn? Did we learn? And, he's, and said to it, ah, because he found nothing on it but leaves. Nothing on it but beauty. Beautiful, well manicured and pedicured. Beauty well painted and decorated. Beauty well, well stout and well fed. Old but fresh. Young and beautiful. Intelligent and educated. Excellent and opportune. And he said to it, you have leaves. But I have found nothing else. Found nothing of benefit. Now before we talk about the, what Jesus said for finding nothing, let's go back to the meaning of fruit. We have done these studies. The word that is translated fruit in the New Testament, of course the New Testament was written in Greek. So every word should go to the Greek word and will give you, will give you opportunity to see bits and pieces of it to make it clearer. The word for fruit is karpos. Okay? R-P-O-S. And it means among other things these basic things fruit means benefit so when the scripture says and he found nothing take me back to the scripture sir when he said it, he found nothing he found nothing on it it means he found no benefit the leaves had no benefit and what is another thing the media had captured this another thing for fruit another thing for fruit descendant so fruit is descendant descendant is what comes out of you what descends from you everything for being a professor means come and test them. you have descendants I was honored to have been at your inaugural lectures and that the woman that moderated and introduced you was your protege somebody that you became an ancestor to a descendant. Amazing. In politics, descendant is not the fact that I anoint who will succeed me. Nonsense. Descendant is the benefit the nation or the state enjoys as a result of you. Here people want human descendants and tell all sort of lies to have descendants and they don't care. They don't about what effect it has in the polity and in the people. Nonsense. When we talk about fruit, is what has the state become? What has the nation become? Are our youths more hopeful because there have been a generation of leaders? What we have seen steadily is a decline in hope. Is a, is a, a height, a growing height of despondency. I am unfortunate to live in a generation that Nigerians are proud of disowning Nigeria and we lose the best of our brains and there are men who own the wealth of Nigeria to rule us and who do nothing about it. The most simple thing for such people is that Nigerians are running away from their fatherland and then washing corpses in Yuba and America feeding dogs and sweeping gutters with joy, with pride. Because the place of, offers them a space of life. What, what a shame. A shame on me that I'm alive in this generation. A shame that a young man left Grace family. Because I pray she against what is called Japa. That my work is not to, to stand here and prophesy that you leave Nigeria. My work is to prophesy that Nigerians will come back because the nation is greater. That I cannot reduce this call to the smallness of my boy who thinks blessing is leaving Nigeria to stay abroad. Abroad. Is it your father that made abroad better? Is it your mother? Men, women build abroad. We want to build Nigeria. And we want to hold our leaders accountable in little ways and in great ways. That's why when I preach, there's no way I can preach without insulting somebody. At least let me say something. I'm the Amen. 
that I'm in a generation people will consider me a prophet because I prophesy that they should japa. Japa, you tell me you're the only japa. You come here, you're the only japa. No, me need to inquire japa. No one can. What an insult and a reproach on a generation that I'm blessed to call my own. Because we have leaders who have myopia in everything except how much they amass and whom they want to anoint to succeed in their myopic vision. So wherever you are, God wants descendants. I expect descendants to come from this altar that when I preach, there is a descendant who goes home as a husband and becomes a better man. That there is a young man who goes home and becomes a better person. That there is something that begets you from preaching that turns things around and makes you fresh and new. That's the fruit that is expected of me. Not how many thousands sit to hear me. And how many nations that have my branches. God is the God who follows leaves. When he sees leaves, his hunger is to be satisfied. He's excited to see that there's somebody who is alive. The high cost of living has not killed you. The witches and wizards have not buried you. It means you still have green. You still have leaves. And while you live, you produce benefits. So the one who kept you fresh and green. And you produce descendants. Others, because you are living a great life, there are great people inspired by your life. That fathers don't just have biological children. It's a generation where people have adopted children and have shameless faces to go in church and say, Woman, I'm black man. Woman, I'm black man. And everybody in that church does talk enough. Who you give me? Because you just want to be a biological thing like a goat. Having descendants is not biological. Because there are so many people who have 15 children, 15 scorpions, and 15 pythons, and 15 arrows. Descendants has to do with the value that is imparted. So if you adopt a child and give that child a life, that the child will not have had in the motherless baby's homes and orphanages. You are a great ancestor and you have descendants. You have descendants in every area of life where there are, there are leaves. There is hunger from heaven for benefits. God has interest in your life. God is a stakeholder in your office. And his stake is about your fruit. What do you do with the office? So this year, we have prayed prayers. Protection, security, prosperity, all sorts of longevity. By the grace of God, as we come to the end of the year, whether all these prayers have been answered or not, one thing that is sure is that there are leaves. And the master... Well, we call him Lord. The word Lord means honor. And DNA. The feudal lords were the owners of properties. And they gave them to the vassals. Gave them to people to work. So when we say Jesus is Lord, is the honor of this life. And whether you accept him as such or not, the fact is this. You are somebody's property. If you are not tell me when you were born, you knew when you were in the boom. Tell, tell me what happened to you on the first day of your birth. Beyond what you were told, tell me when the day you will die. And then tell me what will happen to you after you die. Then I will know you must be very, very great. But you have no, no memory of your two years, of your first year, of your first moment. You know nothing. So you are somebody's property. No matter what you serve, God sent me to remind you as we end the year, what leaves have you carried through the year? And what harvest? Look at another word. 
descendant harvest so fruit is harvest harvest is the result of seed you are god's seed your health is a seed from god your protection and security you are not the most secure because you have mobile policemen or women going around with your dss overseeing you you are not most secure because you live in an estate you are not most secure because they may variable you are not most secure because you belong to a secret cult people in your cult have killed each other or rival cultists have killed them you are here today because there are leaves and god wants fruit fruit of repentance first profit i love this so god is a god of profit produce proceeds so when we are looking for a business to produce results at the end of the year you are god's business i am god's business and god is looking fruit now having heard that let's move forward and seeing a fig tree by the road he came to it and found nothing on it but leaves and said to it let no fruit grow on you ever again immediately the fig tree ceased to exist because the fig tree had no purpose the purpose of leaves is fruit the purpose of life is impact righteous kingdom impact in the mind of god next week i have a message while i was reflecting on this message god gave me another message for next week because after next week is now christmas the last sunday or the sunday the 24th and we now to enter other mass but this reflection next week we have the second part of it is already there the point is that the fig tree had something you have no reason to leave you are a wasted project your leaves give me nothing I have benefited nothing of it from you. So, your finances, what has it benefited God? Your health, what has it benefited God? Your office, what has it benefited God? Your marriage, your raising children, your being talented, your being gifted, your living long, your surviving sickness, your surviving disease, whatever it is, what has it benefited the king, the kingdom? What benefits? What benefits? Say, so let no fruit grow on you ever again. Immediately, 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 the fig tree withered away. You're going to rise on your feet. I'm not permitted to go beyond that. I told you I did. I could not give, could not give a theme to this. It defied all the theme. For media, call it. A bad day for a green tree. Just call it that way so that you have something to reflect. The media, the message is a bad day for a green tree. A green tree shouldn't have a bad day, right? A living person shouldn't have bad luck. Bad luck is not having an accident. Bad luck is living without having fruits for God. Without benefiting God. So when you ask God, and God will say, wait a second, why should you live for another day? Wait a second. Wait a second. God has interest. And you dare not think that God is not interested. Your life is God's business on earth. God has no interest in the mountains. God has no interest in the snow. We are talking about climate and global warming. God's interest is in humans. In the midst of the warming. Because one, we, humans are responsible for all of this. And God says if you get humans, the mountains will be meaningful. If you get humans... The thunders will be symphonous. If you get humans, the waves will rise in unison. Get humans. Because he said, let us make man in our image and likeness. Mountains are not his image. You are. You are his business. You dare sit down and see you have a life. 
that do not intrude. And sometimes when the pastor preaches, you say, stay on your lane. And then we both again don't I get all this little Those who died in miscarriage, who are their wives and their husbands and their children? Who told you you were luckier than them? It's just because he spared you with leaves. So that your marriage can inspire your children to have marriage. And this is the, the age that marriage has become non-existent. We are confused about common, common denominator of humanity. We are not longer talking about marriage. We are talking about partnership. He's my partner. Means no commitment. That means humans have divorced themselves from basic things of commitment. And if God is not to be committed to us, he told us of the love of God committed. The image of God is that we are committed. Marriage is not partnership, it's commitment. It's not something we just say, my partner, and like a law, a law firm, where partners can go their separate ways any day they like. It's a commitment of life that brings about sacrifice, endurance. And you tell me you used to be a Catholic priest. Yes, I used to be, but I'm now married. And you tell me, what is your own marriage? I'm learning. And I expect you to teach me. You have been there for a long time. Teach not only me, teach your children. Teach everybody. Let your life inspire somebody. Be, be an ancestor. Rise to your feet. Rise to your feet. I'm sorry, I will apologize after all of this. Because it looks like a lot of people are naked in this church. As I close my eyes, there are naked people everywhere. Naked, fruitful people without. And nothing other than that they live. God is saying, I will not say no one will find fruit. Because that's not the business for you. And I will tell you why. Next week I will tell you why. So today we are not concluding with how the gospel ends. We are concluding with being an ambassador. Speaking in the word of God that you will be reconciled to God. So while you go back to the office tomorrow and looking for every additional thing you will take home. And cutting from everywhere and doing everything to take home. Just know that your, your fruit is not what you eat. An apple tree does not eat its fruit. For Paul does not eat its fruit. Only we humans eat our fruit maker and manata. That in the office, every fruit that others should benefit from, because fruit blesses only the other. Sir, your fruit does not bless you, it blesses others. So fruitfulness is how you have become a blessing to others. So as we end the year and there is a madness to eat your fruit. That in every area you should be helpful and blessing to another person. You eat and swallow. And if God should say nobody will eat fruit from including you and it ends. Shall not end. Mercy. 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 Said has come up here. Let's sing mercy. Let's sing mercy. Like I said, I see naked people everywhere naked people naked leaves everywhere but no fruit naked and heaven is mourning God is still hungry if your life were to be the only food that will bring him satisfaction for creation will you make him happy to spare the world for another day Abraham told him if, I, if you had 50 men what of if you have 50 will you still destroy if he will depend on you for God to spare a generation, will God spare a generation? If you just depend on you for God to spare your family until Christ comes, will God not spare? You? Please, if you can't close your eyes, don't be distracted. Tell God, yes, I have leaves, undeniable. Mention areas you have leaves. I was sick and I recovered. I'm here. I went to school. I had a job. I'm here. I finished school. I've not yet had a job. I'm here. Those who began with me, some were buried as students. I'm not yet in school, but I'm here. Many people were born without capacity to study. 
I'm serving somebody as a driver, as a house girl. But I'm here, that is live. If you were born without hands, or born with autistic condition and crippled, you will be nobody's house help. No matter your situation and your condition, there are leaves. And the master is hungry. It's just hungry. Just hungry. It's hungry. It's hungry. It's hungry. The master is hungry. The master is hungry. The master is hungry. While you talk to God, tell God, you know, I've done many things that I shouldn't be spared. In the dust, at the foot of the cross, where mercy paid for me. Where the roar I deserve, it is gone, it is past. Your blood has killed me. I will kneel in the dust at the foot of the cross where mercy paid for me. Where the roar I deserve. It is gone, it is past Your blood has hidden me Mercy Mercy As endless as the sea I'll sing your hallelujah for all eternity. We will lift up the cup and the bread we will break, remembering. Your love, we were falling from grace, but you took on a shape and nailed it to the cross. Carabosh, for mercy, God, your mercy. Is as endless as the sea, and I'll sing your hallelujah for all these Oh God, your mercy. Mercy, Lord, mercy. As the heavens are high above the earth, so far you have removed our guilt from us. The one, oh, the wonder of your 
mercy be a Señor. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, may I never lose the wonder. You are- 
on an acceptable day I hate you and today is the acceptable day everyone who truly turns to him for mercy his mercies are new unto them no matter how wasteful and prodigal we have been his mercy is today new if somebody can just turn their heart to him just call that name Jesus Jesus means God will save Jesus is a promise and God keeps his promise Jesus is a promise that God will save so calling Jesus is challenging the faithfulness of God calling Jesus in repentance calling Jesus for forgiveness chance is the, the vocation and the invocation of God's faithfulness and God says yes this is the acceptable day this is the day of salvation Lord save a man who turns to you nothing is too dark to be forgiven no life is too waste to be turned around show mercy to a woman who turns to you show mercy to a young girl a young man who just realized the life of this year had been a wasted year green but no fruit no benefit to your kingdom lives that do not honor you show mercy to men and women in immorality show mercy to men and women in sitting on people's rights and eating people's fingers eating away the life of those they are supposed to oversee and supervise spare me and all ministers who sometimes have to deal in favor of human favor and human kindness and goodness and compromising on the message of your truth show mercy so show mercy to men and women in marriage who daily say to the children that marriage is a wasted project those who turn homes into hostile zones and war centers and their children caught in the crossfire please forgive and show mercy to lecturers who destroy the very lives of those they are supposed to build in knowledge Please show mercy to those who use their offices to keep people as sex slaves for promotion and in furtherance of their career. Please show mercy. Show mercy upon us who have privilege, but use the privilege to build ourselves and ourselves alone and do not give fruit to benefit others. Please show mercy for selfishness. For reducing everything into our pocket and making the world as big as our desires. Show mercy. Show mercy to the church. We have a compromising church, a church that no longer has a voice, a voice that a church that can be bought and sold and paid for and silenced. Please show mercy. Show mercy. Show mercy. Show mercy in the political arena. Let hope come back to the young in Nigeria. Let pride return to being a Nigerian. Please, show mercy. Show mercy upon this state on account of young men and women who get angry and just vent their anger on bringing down street lights. For there is nothing bright in a street light that shines over people without future. Show mercy upon the leadership of our state. People positions. A state that is known for wealth in oil, but hosts the headquarters of poverty in Nigeria. 
please show mercy. Show mercy upon a state that former governors are richer than the, the states. And everybody is just looking for opportunity to be richer than the predecessor. And people are walking around in hopelessness. Show mercy. Show mercy upon our culture. That fathers literally sell their daughters. And make sure that those who marry their daughters will have no life after marriage. Because they to die in order to marry. Show mercy. Show merit mercy upon a traditional institution. That the cost of bearing a corpse is greater than the cost of being alive. That people have to literally die in order to bury their parents. Because of the settlement of tradition. And the culture of death. Lord, visit us in this state. Can you just lift up your two hands? Just call God's mercy upon yourself. And upon your family. Say, Lord, spare me for another year. Please spare me. Spare my children. Spare my future. Please, Lord, spare me. Spare me. Spare me. Spare me. Spare me not because of me. Spare me for your name's sake. Spare our leaders, our political leaders. Let there be a turnaround. Race be men and women who will make a difference. At the national level, visit Tunubu. Visit all those in the national leadership. Lord, their success is the success of Nigeria. Visit this state and the leadership of this state. Because the success of the leadership of this state is a success of the poor people who roam the street. More and more people are getting insane. We have more bad people, new numbers, new members of the community of insane people on our streets every additional day because of frustration. Depression now reaches children. There are more young depressed people than elders. Hopelessness. Lord, show mercy. Show mercy because our young girls are turning into prostitution. Apps on phone turns young innocent girls into prostitutes. There are now male, or pro male prostitutes, homosexual. Because of hopelessness, secret cult is currency. Because of hopelessness, people are looking for fraternity where they find community of care. Lord, show mercy. Show mercy upon families that are broken because parents don't care. Show mercy. Show mercy. Show mercy upon a man who says, Show mercy. Lord, everyone who turns to you in this church today, Lord, show mercy. No matter what that person has done, no matter the history, Lord, your mercy is greater than our, our story. Your mercy is greater than our mess. All we need is mercy. Because your favor is in your mercy. Your goodness is in your mercy. Your healing is in your mercy. Lord, if you show us mercy, that is okay. Because we know your mercy will spare us. Your mercy will pro Just show us mercy. And then leave the rest for the administration of your mercy. And we shall be restored. We shall sing again and we shall dance. In the time of God, it was said, money is not the problem. What to do with money is the problem. But when you restore us by your mercy, money will not be the problem. And what to do with the money will not be the problem. Thank you, Father.
You could lay your hand on any part of your body. You could close your eyes while you hold your stuff. A young girl, a young woman in the school of the Holy Spirit sat in my office yesterday after our session. Tell me what God has done for you in this school. See, before I talk about this school, I used to have asthma, terrible asthma. And I had inhalers that will not last for one month. And one day on radio, because I listen to it every Wednesday, on grace and inspiration, you say, lay your hand wherever it is. And I just laid my hand on my chest and cried. And you prayed. And instantly, it left. We have a woman in this assembly who had a terminal heart condition confirmed by a doctor here that it, it had reached a terminal level and she just kept coming to church she kept just kept coming to church and when i say lay your hands where it is and she will lay until eventually everything restored to normal and she's going on our life so i'm just saying this so that you take this moment seriously what if god wants to take a burden of you just close your eyes and lay your hand when i say close your eyes some people may have need to lay their hands where they may feel awkward that somebody's looking but just lay your hands and just trust father in the name of jesus you have put your word in my mouth you have put your healing in my hand all of this in the word wherever somebody lays their hand whether or another person i ask that the ministers of healing will deliver in full measure for full recovery. That cancer and what could lead to cancer dies now. Conditions of the prostrate, whatever is the stage, cervical issues, brain issues, spinal, spine issues, internal organ issues, blood issues, Blood, blood pressure, blood sugar, whatever it is, low blood pressure. As somebody lays on Father, at the certainty of the resurrection and thy stripes, we are already healed. I declare that these ones are healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody who has been built for surgery but has been looking for money gathering money forever i am making an assurance it's a promise when you go back for check the doctor will tell you there is no need for surgery in the name of jesus Christ. thank you father for taking away the reproach the reproach that has followed somebody through the years and you have told us in this house there shall be no carryover so that today we mark the end of a particular trailing, trailing reproaches. Things that follow people and make new years into old familiar years. It ends now in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody who has issues with breathing. Sometimes it just comes and you're just breathless and gasping. And it comes just sporadically. You cannot predict it. The last time it came, I signed it into law by this decree that that last time is the last time I close the door against it and it ends in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, we ask I, I, somebody's house that the door has been shut. You no, know, it's like somebody, your door of your house has been shut. It's like nothing comes in. Every good thing that comes meets the door shut. It's just like Iba Akufo. That, oh, nobody is here. Oh, Iba Ado, and no answer. That's what I see in my spirit. That's what I hear. From now, oh, Woyabaro. I command that the doors of your house, they are open for favor. They are open for mercy. They are open for grace. In the name of Jesus Christ. Will you just lift up your tongue and just say thank you. Thank you. Just say a few words of thank you. For anything at all. Anything at all. Just say thank you. May I 
Luz de amor. 